Hey, it's Jacob again, bringing you another Tuesday Tithe. Today we're going to take a look at two products we carry at Cutthroat Anglers that are unique to our shop. The first is this desktop tying station produced in Summit County, Colorado by our very own guide and fly designer, Charlie Schmidt. We are going to be tying a tungsten pheasant tail nymph today. And more specifically, we're going to be using the kit that we have available on our web store at fishcolorado.com. All right, so taking a quick look at the materials that we're going to get in this tungsten pheasant tail fly tying kit. We're going to have six pheasant tail feathers in three different colors, light olive, natural, and dyed done. We're going to have one spool of opal tinsel, two spools of brassy sized ultra wire, black and copper, three spools of unithread size 6-0 in olive done, iron gray, and wine, 50 TMC 100 hooks in size 14 and 16, 50 tungsten beads in size 7 64 and 3 30 seconds in a copper and black nickel color, and we're going to have one pack of peacock curl. And that's going to be all the materials that you'll need to tie these tungsten pheasant tail nymphs. 50 of them when it's all said and done, and you'll have plenty of material left over besides the hooks and beads. Now I'm going to go ahead and sit down and get my tying station all organized with the materials to tie these tungsten pheasant tail nymphs. These tying stations can help you tie more quickly and productively by keeping all your tools and materials organized. And they also make clean up a breeze if you have to get your stuff out of the way. I'm not going to talk too much about the individual features of this tying station, but you will be able to see how handy it is as I use it in today's tutorial. We're going to be using pretty standard tools today. I'm going to use a Stompho adjustable drag tension bobbin, some rising stellar scissors 2.0, a CNF Designs whip finish, a CNF Designs hackle plier, and a bodkin. I have selected a size 14 TMC 100 hook from the kit and a 7 ths inch black nickel tungsten bead. I'm going to start out by putting some 0 .015 lead wire behind that bead. I'll do a couple wraps, push it up into the bead and just to get a bit of a taper going and add a little bit more weight I'll do a couple wraps back and then just use your uh, fingernail if you can to trim off that slack. Then I'm going to tie in my thread right behind that wire. I went with the wine colored thread for this pheasant tail I'm going to tie. Lay down a little bit of thread through that wire to lock it down. And then I lay down a thin thread base back to where the ending point of the fly is going to be, right before the start of the bend in the hook. Bring the thread back up towards that wire. Then I'm going to use the dun colored pheasant tail. Really nice color pheasant tail. Cut maybe three to six fibers for your tail. When you're happy with your tail clump, make sure you're getting it the length you want. I like to do pretty long tails. Grab them by the tips. I tie them in right behind that wire. Then hold them on top of the hook. 
as you wrap back. Also keep in mind, this is just my version of the pheasant tail. There are, there are 101 different ways to tie this pattern. And this is how I do it. After you get that, those tails tied in, you're gonna take your brassy sized ultra wire and I went with the black for this pheasant tail. I also try to tie that in right behind the lead wire. Makes a little bit more of a smooth transition there. One trick I like to do with my pheasant tails, I like to try to leave a little bit of a hot spot with the thread uh, right at the uh, near the tail there. And to do that, I'll stop the wire a little bit short from the tie-in point there. I'm just gonna go ahead and fill in a little bit of taper there, smooth things out. Now, going back for more of the same pheasant tail, probably need about three or four fibers to wrap the body. And I'm gonna grab those by the tips. I'm actually gonna tie them in by the tips. To do that, I, I stick them, I hold the thread straight out towards myself, stick the pheasant tails down in that uh, right angle created there, then bring the thread over top. And if you need to adjust them a little bit, don't lock them down yet, and pull them back. And like I said, with that hot spot, I'm gonna tie them in right to that same spot I tied in the wire, but not quite all the way back to the tails. And then move that thread forward. You don't have to do this, but it's gonna make your fly way more durable. I take some Zappa Gap or whatever head cement you're using. And uh, use your bodkin to get that coated all over the all over the abdomen. And then you're going to palmer your pheasant tail forward. I like to use a hackle plier. You don't have to have one, but it makes things a little easier. That super glue is going to make it nice and durable. And you're wrapping these pheasant tails the same direction you wrap your thread over top of the hook. And about three quarters of the way up the hook shank towards the bead. I'm gonna tie those off. One or two wraps, just make sure they're not gonna come undone. That super glue will help reinsure that. Now we're gonna come in with our wire we have tied in, and we're gonna basically do the same thing with that wrap forward, making a segmented look. But we actually want to wrap the opposite way that we wrap the pheasant tail to help lock the pheasant tail down once again, makes it more durable. And once again, I'm gonna tie the wire off right at that three quarter mark or near it. Once you get that locked in there well, helicopter it off. Now, we're gonna start uh, building our wing case. If you want to add a little flash to your wing case, you're gonna come in with your opal tinsel right now. I actually went ahead and uh, cut that tinsel strip in half because I wanted a little bit thinner, more subtle piece of flash. Uh, you could use the full width of it as well if you want a full flashback. You want to get that tied in right on top of the nymph and get it tied up, tied off to the point, to that three quarter point. And you're going to have a, want a decent tail end sticking off the back. You can kind of use your thumb to get that centered up. Then more pheasant tail. Using the same color the whole time, the dunk color. Uh, here you want to take at least uh, six of these to build the wing case and legs of this nymph. I normally, I normally go a little more, like maybe eight or so. And one thing I definitely find that helps me, you can see how that natural taper of the feather 
um, isn't going to work well when you tie it in and then go to make your legs. They're going to be all, all different lengths. So I try to even them up before I tie them in. Normally you can kind of do it pretty quickly just uh, splitting it in two and pulling one section up. And having a little bit of variance through there is kind of good to make some nice buggy looking legs but now they're all closer together. Then we want to tie them in with the tips facing backwards. Um, the hard part here is judging how far back to tie, how long to tie out the tips. Because um, when you fold it forward, um, then fold it back again, that's what will make your legs. But you kind of have to, to get good at guesstimating how long you need to make those. I normally go about, oh, say half the length. I put, I put them back half the length of the tail back there. And then tie them in right at that three quarter point once again. And you want to try to keep these nice and on top of the hook. You can spread them out with your thumb. You can even pull some. Make sure you have, you have them locked in well. And cut off the butts. And once you have those tied in well, we are going to need some of our peacock curl. For, uh, for a bigger nymph like this, size 14, I normally take at least two pieces of hurl at the same time and tie them in. These ones are kind of broken, um, but you want to tie them in by the ends that would be the tips. Again, you want to tie these in at the three quarter mark there. Move your thread up towards the bead. This part can be a little tricky. These can be easy to break. One trick that I've figured out is that I normally, if I do break them, it's whenever I'm putting tension on the back side here, it's harder to control. So rather than pulling on them, whenever I go over the back of the hook, I'll keep them there with my finger. That way there's no tension on them. And then when you're pulling on the front side here, it's easier to control the tension. So. When I get to the back side, finger down, and it holds them there nice and gently. One, uh, another uh, trick to make your fly more durable, come back with your, about halfway through the length of your hurl, come back, lock it down with a wrap or two, a thread, and then go back over it with the hurl, just kind of a little bit of reinsurance in case you lose some of it. Tie that off right behind the bead with a wrap or two. Uh, so now we have our peacock curl tied in to make our thorax. Next step is to pull the wing casing over and tie it off. Uh, here you're basically just going to grab all those pheasant tail tips. You can start kind of working them forward to, to give them a little memory. And eventually they should all kind of come forward. If there's any stragglers back here like that guy, you can trim it off. The shorter you make these, the harder this will be to grab them. Um, but there comes a point where if they're too long, it's, it's not going to look good as legs. So there's a happy medium there. I like to try to pull those right over the bead. Then I use my left hand to bring the, the bobbin and thread up over. Keep them locked in there. One more wrap over just to make sure they don't get flying. And then what we're gonna do is try to split these down the middle, approximately same number on either side. Same thing, kinda get them started. Eventually you should be able to get them held down on either side. Once you do, just bring that thread up and over. Try to lock them in a downward angle like legs. And then, since we have our flashback tied in, I'm uh, gonna pull that up and over, just like the, the pheasant tail. Pull it up and over. Hold it with your right, come over with your left. Just making sure you get it, try to get right in the middle there. 
and another durability thing double it back lock it in again then grab your whip finish and seal everything off and you can come in and trim off that tinsel trim up any little stragglers you're not liking you could call it quits right there but one thing I've been doing on a lot of my nymphs is adding a UV resin uh, bubble back that helps bring out that wing case. Before that, I'm gonna go ahead and do one or two insurance whip finishes. I'm gonna put a little head cement in this last one. Some zap a gap cement. Right there you have a perfectly good pheasant tail, but like I said, I'm gonna use some of that Loon UV Not Sense, which you can also get from our store. Before I do that, I'm gonna kinda of get the legs in the position I want. Use my left hand to hold those legs out of the way. Don't need a lot. use a bodkin to get it where I want then I uh, hit it with your UV light once you're happy with your bubble back there and that will be our finished pheasant tell me one of the oldest patterns in the book and Proven time and time again. Probably one of my favorite nymphs to tie.